So today is a day for celebration. You know why? Because this is my 100th video. I've deleted some videos, some have been re-uploaded, etc, etc, but point is, this is the big 100. And so I thought, for this milestone, why not talk about my favorite movies of all time? Now I was considering making a top 10 best movies of all time video, but looking through the years of film, I realized that there are quite a few classics and probably amazing films that I haven't seen, that most likely would be on my top 10 if I had. I'm talking some Kubrick films, some Tarantino films, some Hitchcock films, some Scorsese films, movies like The Godfather, Citizen Kane, Schindler's List, one or two classic action movies like Commando and Die Hard. My point is, I'm trying to watch as many of these films as I can, and in a few years I plan to make another video once I have seen these. But as for right now, I can't do that. These are just a bunch of movies that I love and I think everyone should check out. Got it? Alright, with all that out of the way, let's get into my favorite films going in order of release year. The Wizard of Oz. This is a pretty obvious one, but you have to admit, it's a complete classic and an excellent film on the whole. It's great just imagining how blown away people were in the cinemas back in 1939 when they saw it go from this black and white movie to this ultra colorful fantasy film. Like, we think Gravity and Interstellar have cool visuals. Imagine seeing this back in the 30s. It's also just a good movie, with great songs, great acting, likable characters, pretty amazing visual effects for the time, and it's a really timeless tale. Singing in the Rain, one of the best movie musicals ever. If you've never caught yourself absentmindedly humming or whistling at least one of the songs from this movie, you probably aren't human. My personal favorite songs from this would be, obviously, Singing in the Rain. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Moses. Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. But all of them are really catchy. Besides the great music, this is just a fun movie in general, led by charming performances and showcasing an interesting plot set in the time when movies were transitioning from silent to sound. The film is just clever, it's funny, and I'm sorry, but that tap dancing stuff just impresses the hell out of me. Especially those rather long one shots where it doesn't cut at all, and they have to get it just right, it's awesome. North by Northwest. This is one of the few Hitchcock films I've seen, and it sure does get me interested in watching more. It's really suspenseful and exciting, it has that awesome action scene with the crop duster. For 1957, that would be impressive. But the cinematography and camera work make it still hold up today. It's full of iconic moments, it has great performances from everyone, mainly Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint. It has one of the best movie soundtracks of all time. It's funny, and normally humor doesn't really age well, but this movie, yeah, it's still pretty funny. The climax on Mount Rushmore is awesome, and this is overall fun classic. Early Disney animation. Now this may seem like cheating, but I'm gonna group about a dozen movies together here, because I can't talk about all of them individually. I'm talking the Disney animations from the 30s to the 70s. I don't know, there's probably some name for that, like the Silver Age or the era of something, but I'm just gonna call it early Disney animation. I'm talking about Snow White, Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, Cinderella, Bambi, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, Sleeping Beauty, Sword in the Stone, The Jungle Book, Robin Hood, and Aristocats. You know, give or take a few. These are the quintessential animated kids films that started it all. While I really enjoy all of these, my two favorites have got to be Jungle Book and Robin Hood. Jungle Book has some of the best songs from any Disney movie ever. I mean the bare necessities or Mother Nature's recipes that bring the bare necessities of life. On top of just being a great film. And Robin Hood is such a fun, lighthearted adventure film that I grew up on. Blazing Saddles. Along with the movie I'll talk about later, this is one of the best spoofs or satires ever. It's laugh out loud funny. Like I said, comedy doesn't age well, but here, it's still hilarious. It does border on offensive a couple times, but it never goes too far. It's a fun western spoof with great performances from everyone. The music and songs are awesome, it's vulgar but in a good way, and it's got a ton of memorable lines. What do you like to do? Oh, I don't know. Play chess? Screw. Well, let's play chess. Overall, a really funny spoof, and one of the best ones out there. Jaws. This is kind of a masterpiece. It's one of the most suspenseful films ever. It builds up the tension, and then when it pays off, it pays off in a big way. Right from the opening scene, it instills this sense of dread in you. All the performances are perfect, with Robert Shaw as the standout to me at least, and of course, the shark. Spielberg tends to use revolutionary effects, and this is no exception. The fact that the animatronic shark kept breaking down meant that they had to cut down on the shark's appearances in the film, and so it made it much more suspenseful and frightening when it showed up. It's a legendary film, and it has that amazing John Williams music. You'll probably be seeing a lot more of him. The original Star Wars trilogy. I personally don't love Star Wars as much as everyone else does. That being said, I still respect these movies as pretty great and a lot of fun. Firstly, the special effects are phenomenal, and they still hold up for the most part. That's the difference between CGI and practical effects. Generally speaking, they look a lot better down the line. Jurassic Park wouldn't really hold up if the dinosaurs were completely CG. Anyway, we'll get to that film later on. This entire trilogy is just the perfect story of a hero finding his place in the universe. It has one of the best villains in cinema history, one of the best plot twists, one of the best scores, and one of my personal favorite characters ever, and solo. It's also full of wonder and awe with all those strange worlds and creatures. Also, it gave us Yoda, and I like doing Yoda impressions, so that's just another bonus. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. Hmm? <laughs> 
right. This series is everywhere in pop culture, and I think that's really the only thing I don't like. Everyone sets up Star Wars like it's the greatest thing on the face of the earth, and they're great movies with really iconic characters and moments, and that's just what they are for me. Great movies. The fact that the Force is actually some people's religion, that's taking it a bit too far. I'd say A New Hope is good, but kind of slow. Empire Strikes Back is great with tons of awesome moments, and Return of the Jedi is just a lot of fun with a happy ending. I don't really know which of these I like better, so I'll just stay neutral as not to anger a massive horde of fanboys. Superman the movie. This film is an interesting case, because if this had completely sucked, we wouldn't at all have the superhero movie genre we have today. But thanks to this being a pure, fun, uplifting film, we now have almost 30 of these movies coming out between now and 2020. Anyway, Superman the movie is so awe-inspiring, just from the very start with those opening credits and one of the best theme songs ever playing. The casting is perfect, from Christopher Reeve as Superman, to Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. The visual effects are amazing for the time, and even now they kind of hold up. The Superman costume is great, albeit slightly dated. This whole movie is just classic and will for the most part stand the test of time. The reason this is so much better and has such a nicer vibe to it than, let's say, Superman 4 The Quest for Peace is because this movie feels like a lot of people put some genuine time and effort into something they were passionate about. It's not without its flaws, like, just gonna be frank, that ending where Superman reverses time, it's dumb. But besides that, it's great. It's so fun and uplifting and makes you feel happy and puts a smile on your face. It makes you want to be a superhero and save the day, unlike later Superman movies. <clears throat> Overall, a great superhero movie and just a great movie in general. Airplane. This is that other spoof movie I was talking about. This film isn't extremely smart or extremely well thought out, it's just a really fun time. It's extremely quotable, it's extremely funny, it's just, I don't even want to talk about it. It's simply a really hilarious movie and I don't want to ruin it by talking about it too much. Go out and find it and watch it. You will not regret it. Although after seeing it, you will always think twice about eating fish on an airplane. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the film that made me love movies. It's one of, if not the most fun film ever. It is the perfect fun adventure romp. This is Harrison Ford's best character. I don't care what you say. He's awesome as Han Solo, but Indy is my favorite. He beats up Nazis, he gets the girl, he swings with a whip, he shoots with a gun. This film has one of the best opening scenes ever, with the running away from the boulder through all the traps, and once again, John Williams is a genius. The fight in the burning bar is awesome, Marion is a great character, the part where that big Nazi tough guy gets decapitated by the propeller is classic, and that scene at the end where all the Nazis are getting their faces melted, that was the most horrifying thing to me as a young child. But I still love this. This has characters you love, action set pieces that are exciting, this is in my opinion Spielberg's best. E.T. Another film that made me love movies. This is a really touching adventure film. First off, E.T. himself. He's so adorable and lovable. I challenge anyone not to love this little guy. When he says E.T. phone home, it's perfect. This is also one of the first movies that actually made me cry. I know, I'm a sappy kid or whatever you're gonna say, but that stuff just made me tear up. The movie is also in parts an exciting sci-fi adventure. When E.T. is riding in the basket of the bike and it flies, that might be the most iconic movie image ever. I've used the word iconic a lot in this video. Oh well. At the end, when, again, spoiler alert, E.T. does go home, it's a beautiful ending. Both adults and kids will love this film. The Terminator. This was James Cameron's first big movie, besides Piranha 2 The Spawning, which is probably awesome. I haven't seen this. This is really, at its core, an action horror movie, and most stuff about it is awesome. The performances, Linda Hamilton isn't the Sarah Connor most people know yet, but she still plays a frightened waitress pretty well. Michael Bean is great as Kyle Reese, and of course Arnold is completely perfect as the killer robot. It has some exciting action, revolutionary visual effects, though some are a little out of date. One of the best and most original movie stories ever. Like I said, action horror. It does have some genuinely terrifying moments. It also has all the one-liners you could want, just as the icing on the cake. I'll be back. Mississippi Burning. I won't spend a ton of time on this because again, I don't want to ruin it by talking about it to death. This is an extremely entertaining and engaging and sometimes kind of horrifying film. This is a little bit of an underrated movie. Yeah, it was nominated for Best Picture, but not as many people know about it as I would have thought. The soundtrack is amazing and memorable. The mystery of everything is interesting. Also, Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe absolutely kill it. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. I'm not gonna lie, I'm an action movie fan. So when I watch the best action film of all time, I'm gonna be pretty happy. And a really big shame is that I know people who, when I mention this film, they're just like, oh, it's a dumb robot action chase movie. This is anything but that. It turns the original's premise on on its head, how Arnold is now the good guy. It introduced the T-1000, maybe, possibly the best movie villain. The special effects are incredible. They look better than anything today. It has some really frightening moments, it's violent, it has the one-liners again. Hasta la vista, baby. It has the moments and scenes that you'll always remember. Get down. It's funny, it's dark, it's got Edward Furlong and Guns N' Roses, it's Arnold's best role, it's James Cameron's best movie, it is perfect. Jurassic Park. This is a film that I hadn't watched until recently, because it didn't seem like my kind of movie. I've never really been big into dinosaurs, but once I watched it, I realized that this is absolutely my kind of movie. And it's not only because of the dinosaurs. Sam Neill and Laura Dern as the leads, they have some chemistry, but they're just so likable. Richard Attenborough's fantastic, the child actors aren't bad, and Jeff Goldblum, why isn't he just in every movie? Dr. Ian Malcolm is the best, and he has the best laugh in movie history. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> and much like T2, the effects are so great and absolutely stand up to any CGI garbage that comes out today. And this film being so amazing is why Jurassic World has done so well at the box office. Also, did I mention that Jeff Goldblum is in this? That should be reason enough to see it. The golden age of Disney. And by that, I mean The Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and The Little Mermaid. Again, grouping these together for the sake of time. Honestly, it's called The Golden Age. So you know these are gonna be some awesome movies. The Lion King is probably my favorite, although I really enjoy all of these. These are the movies that really defined animation at the time, right before Pixar rolled in to ruin it all. The songs are some of Disney's catchiest. It's our problem free. The characters are fun, these are all beautifully animated, and Aladdin gave us one of the best supporting characters in movie history. Robin Williams, may he rest in peace, is so funny and likable and charismatic as the genie, and he absolutely steals the show. I'm telling you, nice to be back, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, where are you from? What's your name? Uh, uh Aladdin. Aladdin! Hello, Aladdin, nice to have you on the show. Can we call you Al, or maybe just Din? Or how about Laddie? The Toy Story Trilogy. This is definitely one of the best trilogies of all time. These are the movies that made Pixar, Pixar. The movies are really funny, the world is really interesting, the characters are awesome, Buzz and Woody make a great team, and they have amazing chemistry. I just want you to know that even though you tried to terminate me, revenge is not an idea we promote on my planet. Oh, well, that's good. But we're not on my planet, are we? Every movie has a really touching or punch to the gut tear up moment. Even the action scenes are exciting. These three movies will live on in history as animated classics, and also as a story that has a great beginning, middle, and end. Oh wait. Now here comes a bit of a controversial one, as this is a movie that some people don't like. This is my list, so I'm gonna put the movies that I love here. So I'm happy to put Independence Day on my list. Independence Day was going to make it here, not just because it's one of the most fun and entertaining movies I've ever seen, but also because it has two of the best movie moments of all time. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> Hello, boys! I'm back! The best movie speech of all time. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. And the best movie explosion of all time. It's the perfect fun summer blockbuster. Aliens invade, and we've only got Will Smith, Bill Pullman, and Jeff Goldblum to save the day. If there are three guys I want to have on my side during an alien invasion, it'd be these guys. This is just an uplifting movie that makes you want to stand up and cheer. When you're done with it, you aren't depressed, you aren't contemplating it for days on end, you just smile and say, that was awesome. The Matrix. This is a film that I knew some things about, just from Matrix parodies, but when I actually sat down to watch it, I realized that this is why everyone keeps referencing this film, because it's fantastic. Look, I'm not saying Keanu Reeves is a very good actor, but that does add a bit of charm to this. His slightly wooden performance. Whoa. And hey, I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty fun to follow Keanu through all these adventures. The rest of the film is unique and original and brilliant. What happened to the Wachowskis after this? I don't know. The action in this is off the charts. Well, that slow-mo kung fu flying stuff, the bullet time on the roof, the visual effects are some of the best in movie history, anime people everywhere question their own reality. If a film can do that, then something's been done right. The Iron Giant. You might see a few of these on my list, but this is one of the most criminally underrated movies ever. It's so amazing, and not enough people have seen it. If you sit down and watch it, I guarantee you will love it. And and you will cry. Seriously, if you don't cry at the end of this, I don't know what to tell you. Mega spoiler alert for the Iron Giant, skip ahead a bit. When at the end, the music swells and the Iron Giant's gonna sacrifice himself to save Hogarth in the town, and then he says that one line, and it just kills me every time. You are who you choose to be. This film from start to finish is just pure fun joy. That part where the Iron Giant's falling and then he realizes he can fly, that's one of my favorite movie moments ever. You can fly? You can fly! The characters are interesting, it's funny, the animation style is great, and it kicked off the career of my favorite director, Brad Bird. The Emperor's New Groove. Funnily enough, another sort of underrated animated movie. It was made on a budget of 100 million, and only made about 170 million, which isn't as bad as The Iron Giant, but still, considering its quality, it should have made a lot more. Casting wise, it's awesome. It's one of the few David Spade movies that I can say I love. Eartha Kitt, great choice for Yzma, one of my favorite Disney villains. Patrick Warburton is the bestest Kronk, and this is overall just a really funny, really good movie. Shrek. Because of all the Shrek jokes and memes on the internet lately, people seem to forget 
forget that Shrek is actually a pretty awesome movie. It's really funny, it's fast paced, and it's really entertaining. Mike Myers is Shrek, Eddie Murphy is Donkey, Cameron Diaz is Fiona. Everyone does a really good job with their character. It puts a fun spin on the fairy tale genre, it pokes fun at Disney, it's exciting, the action is great, the whole scene in the castle with the dragon is awesome. Overall, a really cool movie that started a franchise that became gradually a lot less cool. Monsters Inc., another fantastic Pixar film. Monsters Inc. is one of my top tier, not even Pixar movies, just animated movies in general. It's really funny, mainly because of the contrast between John Goodman as Sully and Billy Crystal as Mike. It has two kind of terrifying villains in Randall and Mr. Waternoose. It's a really interesting premise, one of the most interesting out of any Pixar films. The monsters that hide in your closet actually live in this world where scaring children is a profession. It has some cool action, an adorable little kid, and one of Pixar's saddest moments. It's also got a really nice ending where it turns out that laughter is more powerful than screams. That just makes me smile every time. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. My best and worst of Harry Potter video will be coming out soon, so I'll keep my thoughts on the films in the franchise I put here a bit brief. Some people consider this one of the weaker films in the series. I disagree. This is the film that started the greatest franchise ever. From the music, to the special effects, to the perfect casting, to Harry, Ron, and Hermione becoming friends, to the lighthearted and fun spirit of it, to the whimsical and mysterious world, to the Dursleys, to everything. This might be the film I've watched the most times. I'm not entirely sure, but it's definitely up there. Finding Nemo, yet another fantastic Pixar film. Finding Nemo just starts off with the punch to the gut, now you're gonna cry mode, which is a bold move that Pixar actually ended up doing again. This is essentially an underwater road movie, and it's a pretty spectacular one. First off, Albert Brooks is amazing in the film, and he's going on his adventure, and it's all cool, and then they introduced Ellen DeGeneres as Dory, a character that could have gotten really annoying really fast, but she never did. She was always just there to say the right funny thing, and the two characters played off each other really well. The ending is nice, it has an interesting villain, and it's got Crush the Turtle. That's it, dude! Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. I enjoyed the first two Lord of the Rings movies, but for me, I wasn't super blown away or anything. Don't kill me, fans. But for me, Return of the King is the winner. It's the perfect conclusion to the trilogy, and I'm sick of people complaining about the long ending. It's a long film series, so it's cool to see everything wrapped up. I was legit crying for most of that ending. From the part where Sam is giving Frodo that speech, and then he carries him up the mountain, that's where I just lost it. Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you! Come on! I didn't mean for me crying to be a theme throughout this video, but oh well. It has that awesome, intense, large-scale Lord of the Rings battle. It has the actual Return of the King. It's got a kind of terrifying giant spider. It has the end of Gollum, and it's got the For Frodo moment. For Frodo. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now back to Harry Potter. This is the best fantasy film ever in my opinion. Again, my best and worst video will come out soon, so we'll get more in depth there. But it just has so many awesome things in it that it's baffling. The Dementors, time travel, the Hippogriff, epic visual effects, scary old men, the characters getting more fleshed out, Peter Pettigrew, and it has this werewolf transformation scene, which is one of the few things that I saw as a child that genuinely made me lose sleep. That scene is just so well done, with the music and the excellent special effects and Alfonso Cuaron's direction. This movie gets my seal of approval, and it's somehow the lowest grossing Harry Potter movie. So if you haven't seen it, what are you doing with your life? Spider-Man 2. So I liked the first Spider-Man a lot, but it had a lot of cheesy and dated moments. This is the film that stepped it up in every way. The characters, the action, the villain, the special effects, everything. That train fight is one of the best fight sequences, period. Peter Parker's character arc in the film was really interesting, and a cool direction to take his character. The relationship between him and Harry Osborn got really fleshed out in this, and made me care about those characters, which really helped out in Spider-Man 3. The villain is awesome as well, there isn't really much else to say. It's just an extremely entertaining superhero action movie. The Incredibles. Yeah, Pixar are fantastic. You Get it. This is one of the few movies where I watch it and there's nothing I think is bad or could have been done better. This is simply put my favorite animated film ever, and although this might be pushing it, it could become my favorite superhero movie ever. The characters are amazing, the action is exciting, it has one of the best movie theme songs ever written. It's relatable, it's really funny, it's innovative, it has a great cast, it has so many memorable moments. It's got Sam Jackson asking about his super suit. It puts an interesting spin on the superhero genre. The villain is fun. The finale is awesome. It's a flawless movie. Batman Begins. I know a lot of people say that this is the weakest entry in the Dark Knight trilogy, but I disagree. I almost like it as much as the Dark Knight. This movie had the job of revitalizing a franchise that had become a joke, and so it went the complete opposite way of the Schumacher films, and ended up being fantastic. The cast in this is pretty spectacular. Christian Bale, I'll always stand by this, is the best Batman and Bruce Wayne ever. Michael Caine is a great choice for Alfred, Morgan Freeman is welcome in any movie, and Cillian Murphy as Scarecrow and Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul both play amazing intimidating villain. The action, sure, isn't as good as in the other films, but I still really enjoy the it. The superhero genre would not be the same without this. Ratatouille. Yeah, more Pixar. This is a really fun, nice movie about following your dreams. Also, it made me feel for a rat, which I hate rats, so major points there. Again, Brad Bird, just nailing it. Patton Oswalt does a great job. He seems like just a cool guy in general, and it's just a really great, lighthearted, fast-paced movie. Also, I can say this for any Pixar film, but the animation style is just so stunning to look at. This may not be my favorite Brad Bird film, but that really isn't saying that much. It's still pretty awesome. Iron Man. When I saw 
the trailer for this, I thought it could either be a really cool movie or a 90 minute piece of CGI garbage. And then I watched it. And it wasn't only a really cool movie, it's one of my favorite superhero movies and one of my favorite action movies. What really sets this film apart for me is the script and how the actors handle it. The dialogue is really funny and it avoids cliches like the plague, which is something that most movies should do. Robert Downey Jr. is the perfect balance between character and actor. Every time he's on screen, you are following him. It's a great story of changing who you are for the greater good. It's action packed, it's got ACDC. It blows you away with moments like where he's flying for the first time, or when he's suiting up, or that scene where he goes and takes out those terrorists. One of my favorite scenes in an action movie, hands down. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. When I came out of the cinema back in 2008 after seeing this film, I'm not gonna lie, it was my favorite movie. Just ever. That was, admittedly, before I'd seen a lot of movies, but still, it holds a special place in my heart. But that's not just why it's on this list, just because I liked it when I was smaller. I watched it recently, and it's still awesome. It has one hell of an ensemble cast. Jack Black is hilarious as Poe, and it's just one of the most fun movies you can watch. It has likable characters, a cool villain, and you know, not the most unique message in a kid's movie ever, but still, a good one that people should take to heart. The Dark Knight. I've talked about this film before, and a full review or a analysis of it will come out sometime, so I'll keep my thoughts brief. But I just think this is a fantastic movie. Everything about it, the direction, the acting, the characters, every scene is intense and engaging. Heath Ledger's Joker is easily the best superhero movie performance ever. The action is off the charts. It has a great opening. It has more than one villain and yet doesn't feel overcrowded. It has layers. It's engrossing. It's phenomenal. 10 out of 10. Watch it now. Up. Up could honestly make it here for that opening scene alone. I know people always say, if you didn't cry during this movie, you have no soul. But if you don't at least slightly tear up during that scene where they show Carl and Ellie's life together and they can't have a child and how he then buys the tickets to South America, and then she dies before he can show her, then you should see a doctor. That scene gets to me every time. It also helps that the rest of the film is pretty great. Best picture great? I wouldn't say so. There's a good villain, it has a nice ending, and it has some pretty incredible visuals. Also, Doug is one of the cutest movie dogs ever. District 9. This is one of the more disturbing movies on my list. District 9 is a pretty brilliant movie. The thing I really love the most about it is the social commentary. With these aliens living in the slums, and their outcasts, and how corporate greed isn't stopped by human emotion, that kind of stuff. The style is also really interesting. How it's sometimes like a news report, sometimes like a documentary, and towards the end is mostly cinematic. I'd seen literally nothing from this film going into it, so that part pleasantly surprised me. The cast is really solid too. Charlotte Copley, at first he's kind of this dorky guy, then you feel really sorry for him, then you kind of don't like him, and then at the end, you feel... I don't even know how I felt about that. The aliens have really interesting designs, the movie is gory and bloody and violent, that whole part where his fingernails fall off and he's vomiting black goo, and he's kidnapped by the government and they're experimenting on him, that's one of the more unpleasant, hard to watch scenes, at least for me. In the end, it's a fantastic movie, but if you don't like say, a man getting literally torn apart by aliens, this might not be for you. Inception. This is one of the few summer blockbusters that actually makes you think. A lot. Not just during the movie, but also after. Everyone in the film does an amazing job. From DiCaprio to Hardy to Paige, everyone's great. This is also a really smart movie. Did I understand everything perfectly the first time? No. I'll admit it. But with a few more watches and some hard thinking, it all makes sense. Going into dreams is such an interesting idea. And with the whole thing at the end, where they go into the dreams within dreams within dreams, it just works so well. The visuals are phenomenal. And also, it gave us the sound that every movie uses now. Tangled. A lot of people hail Frozen or Wreck-It Ralph or Big Hero 6 as the best new Disney movies, and while I really, really like those movies, especially Big Hero 6, I'm just getting tired of people forgetting about Tangled. Tangled is one of my favorite Disney movies. It puts a new spin on a fairy tale that everyone knows. It's really funny, the action is surprisingly really cool, the villain is creepy, it has a sweet ending, it's beautifully animated, and it's a good time not just for kids, but for everyone, really. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Yeah, you probably knew this was gonna be here. This was the perfect cap-off to the series. It was epic, it was heartfelt, it was intense, Tense, it was incredible. It's more or less a big epic battle for the entire movie, but it totally worked. It starts off with a break into Gringotts, great opening, then the battle for Hogwarts happens, and you can tell that this is the last stand. There's that great scene where Harry goes to confront his fate, and he comes back to life, Neville gets to shine, Voldemort is defeated, and we get to see a nice happy ending. This is the perfect end to a series. Well, not exactly end, but you know what I mean. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. I'm not gonna lie, I love spy movies, at least the good ones, which makes the fact that I've only seen like three James Bond movies even stranger, but that's besides the point. Ghost Protocol just perfectly encompasses what I love about spy movies, and it's exactly what I've always wanted Mission Impossible to be. 3 got pretty close to that, but there was nothing that really stood out to me in that movie, except for Philip Seymour Hoffman. Walking out of this movie, you remember all of the cool parts. The Kremlin infiltration, climbing on the building, Your line's not long enough! No shit. That opening scene, the ending in that car park place, this is exactly what I want out of a spy movie, out of a Mission Impossible movie, just out of a great action movie. The Avengers. I've already given my thoughts on this film, so check out those videos, I'll link them below. It's the best summer blockbuster and the best superhero movie. It's the most fun I've ever had at a cinema, period. Every second of this film. It was just such an amazing experience. The action is amazing, the characters from all those movies you love team up and are fighting each other and are working together. Loki's a cool villain, the end battle is mind-blowing, it's phenomenal. Argo. This movie is one of the few films that actually had me anxious. Like, biting my 
fingernails kind of anxious. And that's funny, because that really shouldn't be the case with a film where you know how it's going to end. This is based on real events, which is just insane on its own. Ben Affleck does an amazing job both in front of and behind the camera. The characters are engaging, John Goodman, Brian Cranston, Alan Arkin. The tension and suspense builds and builds and builds. At the end, when, spoiler alert, I guess, they've all gotten on the plane and those guys are chasing them. That's the part where I was on the edge of my seat. This is a spectacular film with a great ending, and you won't believe that these things actually happened. Well, go f yourself. Saving Mr. Banks. This is a movie that is elevated by its amazing performances. Tom Hanks is perfect as Walt Disney, Emma Thompson kills it as P.L. Travers, and just everyone. Every member of the supporting cast from Paul Giamatti to Colin Farrell. And the movie in general is just fun to watch and uplifting in parts. In some parts, it's pretty sad. It was a pretty amazing peek behind the curtains, and at the end, you just feel good. This is really just a feel-good movie, with some slightly heavier and deeper messages below the surface. The Lego Movie. I think the main reason this movie made my list is because I was so shocked that it didn't suck. And the fact that it was actually amazing was even better. It came out in February, I had no expectations for this. But I ended up watching it anyway, and I was blown away. This movie is hilarious. Phil Lord and Chris Miller, these guys are two of my favorites. Pretty much all of the jokes completely land. The animation is unique and really just fascinating to watch. The cast is pretty great, and the ending is way more heartfelt and interesting than I would have expected. The Grand Budapest Hotel. I love this movie to death. I enjoy most of Wes Anderson's movies, especially Fantastic Mr. Fox, but this movie fits his very recognizable visual style perfectly. This is a really funny movie. I was in tears from laughing at a point. You're looking so well, darling. You really are. I don't know what sort of cream they've put on you down at the morgue, but I want some. And it's just so zany and weird and fun. Ray Fiennes gives one of my favorite performances in all of movie history, and the rest of the cast too, from Willem Dafoe to Edward Norton, and oh yeah, Jeff Goldblum. The little things about this film as well, how it switches aspect ratio between the time periods, how in the early days there are intentionally bad special effects, that kind of stuff. The ending also kind of caught me by surprise by being, in contrast to the rest of the film, pretty bittersweet and slightly depressing. Captain America, The Winter Soldier. I've already talked about this movie a bunch, links are in the description. My brief thoughts, that's the best action of any Marvel movie yet, has a great style, a few great twists, and quite a few jaw-dropping moments. X-Men, Days of Future Past. Again, already talked about this, links down below. It's the best X-Men film, one of the best superhero films, with great performances all around, a fun time travel element is introduced, a more emotional than I would have thought climax, and overall, a fun blockbuster. Edge of Tomorrow. Again, another movie that took me completely by surprise. Tom Cruise. Maybe he's a weirdo in real life, I don't know. But he's the perfect Hollywood movie star. And in this film, he's playing against his normal characters. He's this cowardly idiot. The story isn't the most original, but it mixes aliens, Groundhog Day, and Bill Paxton's tiny mustache really well. And this is one of the few movies where action isn't just there because, hey, we need an action scene now. The action actually builds up the characters and progresses the plot. That might sound obvious, but if you've seen the film, you know what I mean. While I do think the final battle was slightly underwhelming, the actual ending was a really fun way to end the movie. And that part in the middle where it's montaging through his training and his deaths and him waking up again, too good. Guardians of the Galaxy. Links down below. All in all, this movie is the funniest superhero movie ever. It has awesome action, great use of CGI, and overall, this is one of the best cinema experiences I've had in a while. Whiplash. This is without a doubt one of the most intense films I've ever seen. When you watch this, you can't look away, even when you want to. It's just got you in this grip for an hour and 45 minutes. The performances in this film are insane. J.K. Simmons, one of my favorites, he scared the living crap out of me. Miles Teller was so amazing in this. What happened to him? The music is great. The editing and directing is interesting and pretty flawless. And Fletcher's insults are so horrible, but some and then you kind of laugh at, and you feel bad for laughing. Why would you give it to Neiman, right? You give a calculator to a fucking retard, he's gonna try to turn on a TV with it. Now get your sticks and get your ass on stage. I want to know how much of that was improv. You got 10 minutes, you fucking pathetic pansy ass fruit f Birdman, or the unexpected virtue of ignorance. This is pretty much the perfect film in my opinion, and it has so many layers to it, yet it doesn't feel overcrowded or drowned down by too many different plot points. It's funny, it's dark, it's a kind of biographical film for Michael Keaton, it's an amazing commentary on entertainment and the film industry, and what makes you a good actor or just a talentless movie star. It has a message about leaving behind the past, it also has a amazing performances from Keaton, Norton, Stone, even Galifianakis is amazing. There isn't a single weak link. The soundtrack is great with the drumming. That's stuff that I personally didn't get until repeat viewings. Not even to mention the cinematography, making the whole film look like one shot, which is unheard of and just gives the movie that much more uniqueness. The ambiguous ending is great. It has one of the best monologues in any film where Michael Keaton is attacking this critic. He write a couple of paragraphs. And you know what? None of this costs you fucking anything. You risk nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm a fucking actor. This play cost me everything. 
It has everything. If you ask me, I think this is going to be a film that will stand as a classic for decades to come. The Imitation Game. This is a film that I liken to Argo a lot, because it's a very similar situation. You know what's going to happen, because it's based on true events. But the journey getting there, you're still on the edge of your seat and wondering, will they really make it in time? Everyone is fantastic in this. Cumberbatch kills it, but Kira Knightley and Mark Strong were also great. It's so frustrating to see how people don't trust this guy just because he's socially awkward. On top of that, there's his sexuality, which makes things even more complicated. This film is just extremely well put together and is very engrossing, and I highly recommend it. Kingsman the Secret Service. Now let's move back to fun action movies. I've talked about this movie before, at length, but overall, it's just an extremely fun ride from start to finish. Mad Max, Fury Road. I just made my review for this, so you can check that out here. Awesome action movie with great performances, great characters, a genuinely terrifying villain, and one of the most intriguing movie worlds ever. Inside Out. Like Fury Road, just made my review for it, check it out here. Really fun, extremely clever movie with one of the most unique messages in a film I've seen in a while. Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. Check out my review that I uploaded a bit ago. So look, if I had to make a top 10 list of movies that I think are just purely amazing and everyone should watch just my top 10 personal favorites here's how i would stand as of now the iron giant mad max fury road the dark knight harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban whiplash terminator 2 judgment day indiana jones and the raiders of the lost ark the incredibles the avengers and number one is birdman i really wanted to squeeze et monsters inc argo jurassic park kung fu panda deathly owls part 2 the matrix the jungle book grand budapest hotel and a couple others in there but oh well and if someone just put me on the spot and asked what's your favorite movie of all time i'd probably say birdman if you ask me tomorrow i'm might give a different answer, like The Incredibles, or Avengers, or Whiplash, or Indiana Jones, but as of right now, I'd give it to Birdman. So those are my personal favorite movies of all time. What are some of yours? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. And hey, 100th video. That's pretty awesome if you ask me. Anyway, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram at bhl underscore Hudson, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.